All right, first of all, welcome to Central Ohio. Thank you. What's behind your decision to come here? You have been uh, with SUNY in New York now yes. in a very prominent role for the last several years. Why Ohio State? Right. Well, why not? I mean, it's fantastic. It's, uh, it really is a dream come true. I, you know, I've loved my time as, as SUNY Chancellor. What I've discovered is that my best days were when I was on campus, seeing students, interacting with faculty. And I realized I've always wanted to lead a great university, so I'm still pinching myself. This is like a, a lifelong dream come true. Ohio State University is a university with a lot of silos. You've got, of course, the medical, the agriculture, the business school. You, you're going to be juggling a lot of balls. And, right. of course, the engineering school as well. So is this daunting or is this a challenge you're ready to accept? This is a challenge I'm ready to accept. Uh, you know, I can't come from a system of 64 campuses, and each one of those campuses have colleges and complexity, and so I've gotten the chance to build on what I think I do best, which is build a fabulous team, give people uh, a lot of uh, authority, and we work together, and we really converge onto one mission, one focus. So I'm super excited to do that again here at The Ohio State University. You were doing it at the time of COVID-19. That's You've great. working on the COVID plan in New York. Is this a difficult time to be an educator? You know, it's a challenging time for sure to be an educator. I mean, we pivoted 400,000 students and nearly 30,000 faculty from in-class instruction to remote instruction in the course of two weeks. And that was a challenge. We brought back a thousand students studying abroad and many of them had to be quarantined and, and isolated. That was a challenge. We've developed a plan to restart face-to-face -face instruction and that's gone very well. Each individual campus is putting in place their plan. We are ready to execute on that plan, working in concert with our governor, just like you know, Dr. Drake is doing here with the wonderful leadership of uh, Governor Mike De DeWine. So we're ready. And we will be ready to go. And we, again, when the governor is ready to give the final guidance of how we're opening, I know you know this, but the last 30 days, uh, many states were on pause. Now we're doing unpause, and we're doing it in a phased way, which is very deliberative. And I think that's a great way to ease back into the new normal. How will what you've learned about COVID in New York inform how you move forward this fall right. for students here in Ohio? Well, that's a great question because we have five medical centers and so we have leveraged the knowledge across those medical institutions in order to look at, you know, the most important thing is to how do you keep people safe? Well, you need to be able to uh, screen, you need to be able to test and trace and treat. Now, there are a lot of great questions, and depending on where the campus is and how many cases, you have a different risk profile. And based on that risk profile, you might have a different methodology about how you do taste, uh, test, trace, and, and uh, monitor and treat. With SUNY, with 64 campuses, I have a campus in every, every zip code that has a different probability of an infected case. So we've looked at a variety of cases and I think we have a very good model for moving forward. The other thing is you have to be agile. And um, as you get new information, and we learn more about this, then we have to be agile in order to modify our approaches. And I think that's pretty much what higher ed is doing across the country right now. This university is obviously an institution of higher learning and uh, a respected institution of learning. Absolutely. It is also a football powerhouse. Are you ready to handle what Ohio State football means to the people of Ohio? I'm ready. I'm <laughs> ready. I'm a big uh, athletic person. I was a two-sport athlete in college, and my wife, Veronica, is a four-time All-American swimmer. Uh, from the University of Florida, so she uh, well, won't mention that too much. Um, so yes, we're ready, and it's super excited. I mean, I look at the horseshoe and get goosebumps, and one of the places that I wanted to see was the athletic complex and actually check out the field hockey pitch and uh, because that was my sport in college along with lacrosse. So super excited about that, and I'm also excited because I, I – you know, the motto of The Ohio State University being education for citizenship, I couldn't be more proud of the student athletes in that video, the, the football players who stood up to say, you know, injustice is intolerable, this needs to change. I think we're doing a great job educating the next generation here, and so that's another reason why I'm so excited to be 
the 16th president. The race issues that are emerging that yeah. hit this campus, that hit the campus area over mm -hmm. the past week or so, those don't go away. If anything, a light is being shined on some racial disparities Absolutely. in a brighter fashion than we've ever seen before. Right. How much of that will be a focus of you moving forward here at Ohio State? Oh, we want to take the same level of intentionality that we approached big problems like COVID-19 and apply it to the systemic racism that we know we have in this country. And we get serious about that. We're serious about COVID. We're serious about this. That's what Dr. Drake is working on here at the university. I will continue that and double down on those sorts of, of uh, intentionality. We have pending against this university a very large lawsuit, a situation mm -hmm. that Dr. Drake inherited, yeah. and now you get to inherit, yeah. involving uh, a Dr. Richard Strauss, who was here for two decades, left in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you're aware of that lawsuit, and I'm sure they made you aware of it before you came here. Right. What, is your, what is your take on what the university should be doing? Mm -hmm. with the more than 300 men who claimed they were victimized when they were here. Right. I am aware of the lawsuit. I am aware of, of the case. And I think that Dr. Drake, being honest, open, and transparent about what happened and hitting it head on is the way every leader, you know, I, I, it's admirable. Every leader needs to take. It, we're all, we'll always have problems. There will always be something that comes up. We need to address it. We need to be upfront about it, which Dr. Drake has been, and transparent about what we do about it going forward. And I think those, uh, those are the values that, that I carry, and I'm pleased to see it here. And I think stepping back, um, again, going back to the pandemic for a minute, um, there will be tough decisions that need to be made. And I always think it's helpful when you're looking at tough decisions to have guiding principles. And so I have six guiding principles. The first one is safety first. And that applies whether it's the pandemic, sexual abuse, or uh, racial uh, injustice. Safety first, got to keep our students, faculty, and staff, and community safe. The second one was you're making decisions, got to protect the core. Our core mission as a land-grant institution is to make sure that we serve the people we influence in our communities. Next is to maintain broad access. So again, when you're making decisions on where to put resources, we need to expand that access and then leverage the greatness that is The Ohio State University, our 15 colleges, the Wexner Medical Center, the athletics, every place where people can take inspiration from excellence. And then finally, we owe it to the taxpayers of the state of Ohio to make an impact. And then we owe it to ourselves to have fun <laughs> and do it with integrity and caring and kindness. One of the criticisms this university has had is you mentioned expansion and you mentioned lacrosse is how much money has been spent on physical expansion. Mm -hmm. There are two uh, projects underway, a new tennis facility, multi-million dollar tennis facility, a multi-million dollar lacrosse facility. Mm -hmm. Given the fact that there are budget cuts coming, is it wise to move forward with those kinds of projects? Well, I think that just like in the state of New York, we're, we're looking at prioritization based on budget cuts. Uh, until we see those budget cuts, again, we go back to guiding principles. Uh, and then we execute on those guiding principles once we see what the, the reality is. The great news about The Ohio State University is that there have been some very, very smart moves that have been done in the last decade. So again, first principle of safety, second is uh, maintain the core, preserve the core. So uh, The Ohio State University recognized their core is not parking, so they monetize that. They recognize that their core business is not energy, so they monetize that. So I think that as a result, um, they're positioned to move forward rapidly at a time when I think other institutions that have not made those decisions in the past are not as advantaged. So I'm looking forward to seeing are there other opportunities to, again, get out of the businesses that aren't core to our mission and to double down and invest in those that are. You mentioned energy. This will be my last okay. question. Energy, of course. Governor, you're supposed to call. Oh, uh, right. Okay. But, but I, I know him. He won't yeah, mind. He has it. Okay. <laughs> so your background. This is a two-part question. Okay, your, two your parts. Two That's good. Your background is in energy. Yes. Uh, you hold patents. You yep. have encouraged young women to go into STEM yeah. education. How is that going to push you forward, both in the energy field and maybe monetizing that and, and encouraging young women to follow that path? 
It was a two-part question. Okay, let me take each part at a time. So first of all, let me take attracting uh, women to STEM uh, fields. And I would broaden that to say uh, individuals that haven't participated in the STEM enterprise um, at the same scale. So underrepresented minorities and women. I think one of the ways to encourage individuals to go into a field where they are not as represented, whether it's STEM or whether it's the arts and sciences and professional schools or, or medicine, is to have the faculty rep be representative of the demographics. And so that's one of the things that I launched at SUNY I'm very proud of, which is our Prodigy Initiative, promoting the recruitment opportunities for diversity, inclusion, growth. And so it's the goal to hire 1,000 underrepresented minorities and women in STEM by 2030. And that's going well. So that will be a legacy that continues. So I think that's the first thing. We need to be intentional about who's in our classroom to attract those students to those professions. And I think that transcends STEM. But it's important that STEM is an example. And then, of course, as any great professor, I've forgotten the first part of your question because that's your part, so if you wouldn't mind repeating You're the other one. You're just talking about monetizing oh, yeah. energy and sure. your background. So in, in, as you may know, a, a broader engineering as a background, so um, I think we'll look at the energy assets have been monetized, which is great. You know, I do have a, a passion for uh, energy. I think it drives and fuels what, what we do. But we'll look at other opportunities for things that aren't core to what we do as an educational institution and see what we can do to optimize where we can place our investments in that core mission. All right, he's going to yell at us if Thanks I go so any longer. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it. Well, I hope this is just the start of many. Yeah, thank you very much no, for thank taking you. the time. I do you appreciate bet. it. You know, I, I do quickly, I do, I forgot to ask you this. You are the first gay president of Ohio State. Is that, is that something that you think people will even take notice of anymore in this day and age? Uh, I haven't it. noticed it. I mean, it's yeah. been great. What I have noticed is that Columbus and the Ohio State University have been so welcoming that it's yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, thank you. It was really fun.